So we've finally reached part four of the marketing optimization series. In this video, we're gonna be wrapping it all up. So we'll be prototyping a linear programming model and integrating it back into planning analytics. Ready to get to it? Let's do it. So in this final episode in the series on marketing optimization, we're gonna be wrapping it all up. So we'll use Python to extract data out of our planning analytics cube. So remember we built our op sales analysis cube. We're then gonna prototype our linear programming model using the Python library docplex. And then last but not least, once we run our optimization, we're gonna push all our data back into planning analytics all using TM1Py. There's a couple of moving parts to this, but specifically, we're gonna be connecting to our TM1 cube using TM1Py to draw that data out. We'll then work with it inside of Watson Studio using pandas for data pre-processing. Once that's all done, we'll then prototype our linear programming model using the docplex package. So we'll start to formulate our linear programming model. So remember, it consists of three key things, our goals, our variables, and our constraints. Once we've solved our particular problem, we'll then push our results back into planning analytics, all again from Watson Studio. So we won't actually have to work inside of a server, it's all integrated using the REST API. Ready to get to it? Let's do it. Alrighty, so for the large majority of the optimization component of this video, we're gonna be working inside of Watson Studio and writing our Python code. Now there is one exception to that, we actually need to create a baseline view that we're going to extract when we start using TM1Py to build our optimization. So for that, I'm gonna step into perspectives to build up that view and then from then on, we're working with Python. So let's go into perspectives and open up Explorer. Now within our cube, what we're going to do is just create a new view. And then for this view, we're basically going to set this up so that we can extract all of our data for our optimization problem. So let's set that up. All right, perfect. So that's our optimization view set up. So we've got our predicted stores, our predicted products, all of our sales drivers, and then we've got the week that we're going to be optimizing for. So we're just gonna save this as a public view and call it optimization view. Perfect, cool. So that's our perspectives part done. Now what we're going to do is start building our optimization. So for this, what we're going to be doing is working inside of a Jupyter notebook. So we're going to be writing some Python code. So let's go on ahead and create a Jupyter Notebook. And we're just gonna name our notebook and hit create. As with a lot of my Python tutorials, what we're first going to do is lay out a framework for our code and then we're gonna fill it all in. So there's a couple of things that we need to do as part of our flow. These are set up our credentials, grab our data from planning analytics, build our decision optimization model, solve it, grab the values, and last but not least, push it back into planning analytics. So let's lay out that framework first. Alrighty, so the first thing that we need to do is set up our credentials. Now, this is pretty similar to the way that we set up our credentials when we loaded our data using Python. So what we're going to do is just copy over those credentials and install TM1Py. Perfect, so that's that part done. So similar to what we did, we had our skeleton for our TM1 credentials. And again, we've just copied those over from our previous video. Now what we're going to start doing is importing our data from planning analytics. So first up, let's import our dependencies that we need from TM1Py. Perfect, so those are the dependencies that we need. So we've imported the TM1 service class and we've imported the build pandas data frame from cell set method. So that's just going to help us grab the data that we have from TM1 as a cell set and convert it to a pandas data frame so that we can work with it more easily inside of Python. 
Alrighty, so now that we've set that up, what we're going to do is actually grab the data out of planning analytics. So if you remember, we set up that optimization view. What we're effectively going to be doing is grabbing our data from that optimization view and building a pandas data frame from it. So we can use the with statement again to connect planning analytics, grab the data out and convert it. So let's do it. All right, so we've just run that cell and we've successfully grabbed data out of planning analytics. So just to recap, so we've accessed our op sales analysis cube that we built and we've specifically grabbed all of the data out of our optimization view and then we've built a data frame using the build pandas data frame from cell set method. Now we can take a look at that data frame by just typing in df.head. Now all we need to do is start pre-processing our data. So the large majority of our pre-processing is really to do with dropping the columns that we don't need and setting the columns that we do need as an index. Okay, so what we've done is we've dropped our version column, we've dropped our source and our measure column because we don't need those. And then we've also set our index to the store product and time date column. So this is just going to help us loop through our data frame later on when we start building our decision optimization problem. And last but not least, we've filled out the values that are blank with a zero. So we've just done that using the fill NA method. Alrighty, cool, so now the fun bit. So what we're going to do now is set up our optimization problem. So we're gonna be using decision optimization for this. So this allows us to capitalize on the Cplex API and solve our problem really, really quickly. So let's import our dependencies first up and go from there. All right, so pretty straightforward one there. We just imported the docplex library. And so this is going to allow us to work with Cplex a whole lot easier. Now what we're going to do is start setting up our model. So in order to do that, we just need to create an instance of the model class. Perfect, so that's the beginnings of our model setup. Now the key variables that we're going to have within our decision optimization problem are the store, product, and day that we spend our marketing dollars. So what we're going to do first up is set up our continuous variables for each one of those combinations. So that's really our continuous variable set. Now we're just gonna pass through one additional argument to our continuous var dictionary method, and we're just gonna set our lower bound to zero. So we don't wanna be able to spend negative marketing dollars as part of this problem. All right, perfect. So those are our marketing variables set up. All right, so the next thing that we need to do is start setting up our constraints. Now our core constraint in this particular scenario is that we have a capped maximum demand. Now this basically means that our new sales plus our existing or contractual sales needs to be below our capped maximum demand. So in this particular case, our new sales is represented by our marketing spend multiplied by our return on ad spend. So let's go on ahead and set up those constraints.
Perfect, so those are our constraints set up. So you can see here that we had our contractual sales plus our new sales, which represents our return on ad spend multiplied by our marketing spend needs to be less than our maximum demand. Alrighty, so the next constraint that we're going to add in this particular case is that we're gonna set a maximum marketing spend amount. So this is effectively our marketing budget. Now in this particular case, we're gonna set our marketing budget to be about $50,000. So let's go on ahead and add that constraint. Perfect, so that's our marketing budget applied. Now the last thing that we need to do is specify our optimization goal. So in this case, we're trying to maximize our overall profit figure. So what we need to do is specify what our profit figure represents. This is effectively our new sales plus our historical or contractual sales multiplied by our rebate or profit percentage. So let's go on ahead and model that. All right, perfect. So we've gone and defined our model objective. Now the last thing that we need to do is solve it and then push it back into planning analytics. So let's go on ahead and solve our model. Perfect, so it looks like we've got a successful solution and now that we've run our solution through our optimization problem, we can see that we're now generating an optimal solution of about 93,000 $918.15. So if you cast your mind back to our original rebate income figure that we had in PA, it was around about $89,000. But it's kind of hard to work out what the difference is without putting it back into planning analytics. So let's go on ahead and do that. Okay, so we've now gone and prepared our cell set. So what we're going to be doing is pushing our solution back to the optimized actual version and account 4997. The day product store, as well as the source and the measure will stay the same. And you can see we're extracting our solution value here. And so effectively what we're doing is we're pushing our solution to a specific intersection of data. This is what our cell set represents. Alrighty, so we've set up our cell set. Let's go ahead and push it in. All right, perfect, so no errors there. So what we can do is go back into our planning analytics workspace dashboard and take a look at our optimized result. So again, we're starting out at our home screen. So what we can do is go through to comparison and you can see that we've now loaded our optimized solutions. So before we sort of had our random marketing spend allocation, we were generating about $89,138.82 in profit and now that we've gone and optimized when and where we spend our marketing dollars, we're now generating about $93,918. And that about wraps it up. So we've now gone and solved our optimization problem and pushed it back into PA. Thanks so much for tuning in guys. Hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe. If you've got any questions at all, be sure to drop a mention in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in, peace.